Hey everybody, today we are going to be taking a look at how to create a laser beam. A tracking laser beam that updates depending on where you have, uh, where you're shooting. <laughs> Alright, let me show you how this looks. Keep in mind that the effect you're going to see is a temporary effect. I'm going to show you the functionality. I'm not going to show you necessarily how to create the coolest looking effect. I'll, let, I'll leave that to you. Um, but how to set up the functionality of the laser, laser beam is what we're going to take a look at today. So here, let's jump in and I'll show you what we're going to make. Uh, I also have my laser beam set up so that the voxel environment around I'm using the voxel plugin gets destroyed. That won't be a part of this tutorial, although I suppose it could be. I could comfort cover that briefly in case you're using a voxel world. But this is what we're going to be making. Okay, all right, so like I say, <clears throat> the voxel environment's getting destroyed. I could show you guys how that works as well uh, for those of you using the voxel plugin. It is pretty cool. And so this isn't going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. This is going to be basically a, a, a screenshot, not a screenshot per se, but a, a glimpse at the code. Overall, I'm going to talk you through it. You can pause, you can recreate it. Uh, that way you don't have to sit through an hour of me <clears throat> setting up things. You can just kind of glance and set, set it up at your own speed and I'll kind of step you through what uh, the different sections are all about if I can find where the heck I was. Here we go, okay. So starts out, uh, well this is starting out by spawning a sound for the for the uh, for the for the laser beam. After that you're going to want to spawn your uh, emitters. Uh, this is my beam effects and this is my uh, my hit location effect. Uh, after that, you're going to want to uh, use a beam trace to determine how far the beam goes. Pretty much you're going to want to set a high value to this because if it doesn't have an endpoint value that actually hits, it won't work. In terms of shooting up into the sky without a hitbox, I I'm thinking probably like an invisible hitbox to collide with so that if the player shoots into the sky, it does actually have an endpoint to collide with. Would probably be a good way to do, but I haven't actually set that up. Yet, uh, you're going to want to set a timer by a by an event. Um, I've got my time to 0 0.01 here uh, and also you can just basically create um, any any old event <laughs> that that uh, is triggered every every time the timer recycles and this basically updates the beam source location which I currently have attached to uh, the eye socket of my character kind of Superman laser beam eyes <laughs> just temporary but you know kind of kind of cool. Uh, after that the beam end location uh, where the beam uh, gets hit. Uh, and now what we're going to need to do is set that impact location, which you've probably already done from the beam trace, which we're going to take a look at in just a minute because this is a separate function that we're going to also need to create. Uh, so you probably don't have the uh, beam trace yet. Um, so yeah, forgive forgive uh, the confusion from, uh, from when I said to set up a beam trace because that's actually a function that you're going to need to create in a second. Um, the beam impact FX looks something like this. This is where the hit effect effect spawns. And like I say, we're going to be getting that impact location from the trace, which we're going to do in the function in just a minute. Uh, and this, the rest of this is how to do the voxel world destruction. So I'm actually going to skip that for this video. If you guys want to see that part, I can show you that part as well. Um, and that's that's about it. That's the whole thing. So. Let's take a look at it one more time so I, you can kind of, you know, maybe pause your screen and recreate what you need to recreate. And I'll just kind of slowly scroll through. So here's the beginning. And then we're going to go over to here, phase two, where you set up the timer by event. All right, so you can pause here, set up that. And here's the next bit. You can pause here, set up that. And beyond that is now the voxel world destruction component. And uh, what you're also going to want to do is set up that end beam. Um, this will occur when the, well, this is, uh, this is basically when the player takes their finger off the trigger. So you're going to want to clear and invalidate the timer by handle. That's this timer right up here. Uh, you're going to want to stop your audio component. You're going to want to, uh, release to pool your beam effect. You're going to want to release to pool your, uh, your impact effect. And then you're going to want to destroy the two effect components. So those are the beam and beam impact effects. And of course, the beam sound, all of those variables that we set up here. If you just kind of follow along with the blueprint, you should get you know the same result. 
And then lastly, the beam trace is the function that we'll need to create. So you'll need to create a function. You can call it whatever you want, of course. But it basically looks something like this. You're going to want to get your camera manager uh, and then get the world location of your camera manager. Uh, basically, this is where the player is looking. Um, the uh, debug, uh, draw debug type and trace values are derived from the uh, forward vector of whichever way the camera is facing. Uh, we are also attaching the beams, uh, the, the traces, the traces um, starting point to the to the eye socket here just to get the, the height, I guess, from where it kind of starts originating from. And then we do a line trace by channel. And then we do break hit results. And then we return all of these informations into our return node, including that impact point, which we talked about a minute ago in our previous. So let me just show you guys one more time really quick so you can pause the video. So here's frame one. You're going to want to do this part. And then frame two, you're going to want to pause here and do that part. All right, so that's about all there is to that. Um, and then, yeah, like I say, the uh, beam trace goes in here. You've got your location, impact location, and all that sort of stuff set up. So that's that's about all there is to setting up a similar beam. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I thought I'd just put it together as an entire presentation instead of a you know hour long step through step through process, and you can just kind of copy the the blueprint and uh, figure it out <laughs> figure it out from there. All right, uh, yeah, and like I say, if you guys do want to see the voxel destruction component, let me know in the comments, and I can make a video for that as well. Oh, and one important thing that I actually nearly forgot is the actual beam effect itself. I'm just using a free collection of beam effects. You can probably do the same. It's called the FX Variety Pack from the Marketplace. Uh, and like I say, I'm, I'm just kind of temporarily setting up some effects here. So uh, this is not going to be about how to create a good looking effect. That, that you know, you can figure out in another video. This is how to set up the beam functionality. But um, one or two things that you actually need to do in order to make the beam effect work uh, and that is, let's see, blueprints, beam, beam effect. Uh, basically, I think the only thing you really need to do is set up the lifetime of the beam. So I have my lifetime set to 60 seconds. So if this beam effect actually went on longer than 60 seconds, it would, you know, the effect would stop and it wouldn't, wouldn't keep going. If you want to use a longer beam effect, I would say just set the, uh, the lifetime of it to be longer than that. Um, but otherwise, I, I think that's the only only real change you need to me make uh, to your actual effect. Um, the same, I believe, would be true of your of your hit. The lifetime I have set to one second on mine, um, and that's your your hit effect. But uh, yeah, otherwise, there's nothing really too fancy, I believe, about setting up the particle emitter effects. Now, if you're using Niagara effects, there might be something else involved in terms of where the end point of your beam effect of your effect is i'm not too sure about niagara setup so i've done this with with the what is it the particle effects or whatever um but yeah so i nearly forgot that part but that that is an important part because otherwise like i say if you only have your beam set up for one second lifetime it'll you know disintegrate it'll disappear after a second and uh yeah that then you won't create that sort of you know ongoing laser effect okay that's it all right